Alpha Day. The Committee on Health, Land, Justice, and Culture is now called to order. Today's Tuesday, September 2022. The time is about 2.10 p.m. In compliance with the Open Government Law, notices for this public hearing were published in the Guam Daily Post on Tuesday, September 13, and again on Friday, September 16, 2022, and posted to the Government of Guam Public Notice Portal. Notices were also sent via email to all senators and all main media broadcasting outlets. And of course, this hearing is being live streamed on, on the Guam Legislature's YouTube channel. Individuals testifying shall first be recognized by the chair before speaking and begin by stating their names for record keeping purposes. We have three hearings this afternoon for three different appointments. So the first appointment that we will handle today is the, appoint, the reappointment of Dr. Uh, David Herrera to serve as a member Chamorro Land Trust Commission for a term length of three years, April 11, 2022 to April 10, 2025. I'd like to acknowledge the presence of my colleague, Senator Tello Taitikwi. Thank you, Senator, for being here today with us. Mr. Her Mr. Herrera, thank you for being here as a member of the Chamorro Land Trust Commission and also to the director of the Chamorro, acting director of the Chamorro Land Trust Commission. Thank you for being here with us as well today. And I want to thank you, Mr. Herrera, for um, accepting this appointment again to serve again as a trustee of the commission. And um, so we will begin. I'm going to begin by just giving a very brief overview of the trust itself over the years. So as you know, the late Senator Paul Berdalia was the author of the Chamorro Land Trust Commission Act. He had the vision and political fortitude and will to get this passed 47 years ago in 1975. It was passed unanimously by the 12th Guam Legislature. And for about 20 years, no governor would implement the act until the Inachon Chamorro, under the leadership of Defunto Senator Angel Santos and Defunto Magalahi Ed Benaventi and their wives and many others, including, I think, you, Mr. Herrera, uh, led an education and advocacy campaign urging the governor at that time to implement the trust. It was not implemented, and a suit was filed by attorneys Mike Phillips, Michael Berdali, and myself. This was a pro bono lawsuit without fees on behalf of Angel Santos and Nashon Chamorro to compel Im implementation of the act. The AG at that time had argued that the trust was unconstitutional. A hearing was held at court with hun while hundreds led a protest and camp out on the grounds of Adeloup. A decision was made in 1992 by then Judge Benjamin Cruz that the law was valid and ordered the governor to implement the act and appoint the first commissioners. Governor Ada did appoint the first commissioners, and several years later, in 1995, when Angel Santos was a senator, he introduced the rules and regulations for the trust, which, uh, again, were a little controversial at that time because, um, but he had led hundreds in appearing before the legislature to urge lawmakers to adopt the rules in the version that he had proposed versus the version that had been sent by the commission at that time and the legislature did adopt those rules they've been amended slightly over the over the years and one of the biggest amendments was really to add commercial leasing laws or licensing laws for the commission the chamorro land trust commission is responsible for the disposition of what was then termed chamorro homelands or public lands pursuant to mandates to advance the social cultural and economic development and well-being of the Chamorro people by way of residential, agricultural, and commercial land distribution and economic assistance programs. In the settlement agreement for the case Chamorro Land Trust Commission United, versus United States Gov of America, the, uh, the commission found that the proposed modifications or amendments to the Chamorro Land Trust Act and the rules of regulation and regulations of the Chamorro Land Trust Commission would more clearly demonstrate that the Chamorro Land Trust program is a land restoration program meant to rectify the unjust taking of Chamorro homelands 
by the United States federal government between 1898 and 1968 and would expand the program's eligible beneficiaries to include individuals and their descendants who owned land or who ranched, farmed, or otherwise occupied the lands that were taken. After further settlement negotiations in May 2020, the settlement agreement was signed by the CLTC, the Commission, and Imagahagan Guahan, which resolved that lawsuit. The 35th Guam Legislature passed Bill 419, now Public Law 35-112, to approve the settlement and to make changes to the law and the rules and regulations. Subsequent uh, Bill 229-36 and also became Public Law 36-76, which codified the new rules, uh, which were in conformance then with the settlement agreement. The Commission to today carries on its mission and activities necessary to inform and assist in obtaining maximum utilization of lands, including development of lands to their highest and best use in all phases of residential and agricultural leasing and commercial leasing. All right, so we will begin with the acting director. Um, if you would like to present testimony Buenison Hoffaday, Committee Chairwoman on Land, Speaker Terlahi, and Senator Tello Taidegui. My name is Angela Camacho, and I'm the Acting Administrative Director for Tomorrow Land Trust Committee. Tomorrow Land Trust Commission, I'm sorry. On behalf of Chairman Regis, we would like to extend our sincere gratitude for allowing us to provide testimony on the reappointment of Mr. David Herrera to Tomorrow Land Trust Commission. Um, I, I, I'll be reading um, uh, Chairman Rages's email that he sent to your office today. So it reads, half a day, please be informed. I am unable to participate in today's public hearing. I am home today with three sick kids. I would like to submit the below statement in support of Mr. Herrera's reappointment to the Tomorrow Land Trust Commission. I am in full support of Mr. David B. Herrera's reappointment to the Chamorro Land Trust Commission. In the short time he has been on the commission, Mr. Herrera has demonstrated his commitment in progressing the intent of the trust. He has a, the passion and drive to do what's right and help the people and get long-awaited leases awarded. His hands-on approach has progressed long-standing issues to a path of resolution. I humbly ask that the committee and senators support Mr. Herrera's reappointment to the commission. Sidu Asma'asi, John Regis, Jr. And for the record, if you would allow me, um, I concur with the chairman's um, support for uh, Mr. David uh, Herrera. He has been an asset to us since he's been on board, even just the few months that he sat on the committee. Um, I see him um, take a, a special interest in um, our needs, and he's, he's actually taken on a lot of our challenges with our commercial issues. So I, too, um, am asking and look forward to his reappointment. Thank you. Thank you very much, Director Camacho. So Mr. Herrera, thank you again for accepting this appointment to the commission. So we had a confirmation for you maybe a year ago. It looks like you were appointed to fill the unexpired term back then of Joseph Cruz. And uh, that was in September, 2021. And all right, so your packet that they sent down um, gives some of your background. And so for those listening, um, he's a currently a transportation supervisor. It's a classified position at the Guam International Airport since 2008. He worked for Raytheon from 2000 to 2005 and a QC certifying official and DZSP 21 um, as a test director crane inspector 
as a special projects coordinator for the Department of Land Management and the Chamorro Land Trust from 1997 to 1999, and as a policy researcher for the late Senator Angel L.G. Santos in the 22nd and 23rd Guam legislatures that was 1995 through 1997. So I'm gonna ask you, and you're a current member, so I'm sure we've asked you this at the last hearing as well. Do you have any continuing business or other conflicts of interest that may affect your ability to perform your duties as a commission member? Uh, no, ma'am. Do you have any challenges in attending the commission meetings? Uh, no, ma'am. As a returning commissioner, what are some of the things that you hope to accomplish in this next term of yours? Uh, to uh, progress forward and uh, implement the uh, programs of the land, land trust and to kind of maximize the uh, distribution of uh, residential properties to our constituents that are uh, qualified under the uh, new settlement agreement uh, uh, law. All right, thank you. Yeah, that's my priority as well. Make sure to maximize those residential leases as quickly as possible. And the new settlement was intended to expand those eligible. So we do hope to see that after we've taken care of the existing list of people who've been waiting. Um, I want to commend you in particular, Mr. Herrera, for the work that you've done. Um, you know, we review the minutes regularly. We also listen to the meetings whenever we can and meet with the director or the staff or the chairperson as often as possible to just keep apprised of the Chamorro Land Trust's progress. We want to very much be supportive of the, you know, work that can get accomplished, particularly in this fiscal year, right? Nice. And um, I think that the work that you've done demonstrates that uh, you, you do have this priority to, for residential leases to be, to be issued. So um, at one point, you requested the agency look at track 319 Agate to estimating it to open up 30 lots with power, water, and sewer in close proximity. You stated that this track is in need of access or rights of way, and on June, in June 22, you requested to start the process to, to secure services with public and private partners to establish this access. Can you just brief us on the work um, that will be necessary to accomplish this goal and the process of bringing it to the agency? How was it received by your colleagues and uh, what other support might you need to accomplish that? The response from the uh, colleague, um, Madam Chair, is uh, positive. Now, uh, when, when we uh, look into uh, track 319, I mentioned maybe about 30 to 50 lots. So, uh, looking at the topography of the property, uh, it's a, uh, accessible from the road leading from the uh, Route 2, which is the Agate Marina, to the uh, Pagacho subdivision. As we know, the Agat uh, Pagacho subdivision is uh, equipped with uh, water power sewer and uh, paved roads. So those properties that I mentioned, they're the uh, 30 to 50 lots, uh, are within a uh, high ground uh, elevation. When I say high ground, meaning to say that it's uh, from sea level, it's about maybe, uh, I would say maybe 80 to 100 feet up from the sea level, and then if you uh, consider the topography of the property, uh, behind that or east from that property is the uh, Mount Elephant all the way down to Mount Lam Lam. So considering that Mount Elephant to Mount Lam Lam is about a thousand feet height, and Elephant is about 580 feet high, when it rains, you have uh, flash flood issues going down to the village of Agat and Pagachal. Now, this particular property that, we're, uh, that I mentioned there is, uh, as I mentioned, it's about 80 feet above the elevation. And uh, east or north to that property is a creek called Chaligan Creek. So that creek uh, drains the hydraulic waters from the mountain down to the uh, Agat Marina. So the reason why I kind of proposed that particular uh, part of the property is that uh, to have access, 
It's uh, very minimal in cost just to uh, basically uh, get uh, equipment to open up the uh, rights of way, which is uh, 60 feet wide from the Pagotchel subdivision, and then going into track 319. Now, Pagotchel subdivision is composed of the uh, track 319, which was the plan unit development that was uh, designated back for the, uh, during the uh, land for the land use program. So this is phase one. Phase one was already completed, and maybe about 20 lots were sold. And as you recall, back in 1995, uh, we had that protest with the Chamorro Land Trust to repeal or uh, uh, remove the Chamorro Land Trust, I mean the Land for the Land Lease program, and transfer all those properties over to the uh, Chamorro Land Trust, which was uh, completed. So now the question is that uh, we're saying, is it feasible? In my opinion, uh, yes, it is. Uh, my personal background is uh, heavy equipment, and uh, so to uh, open up the access to those 50 properties, uh, and then you know, setting the, uh, ba the basic road could, could be coral, and then uh, adapting the water and power uh, that would you know, provide the landowners at that particular area uh, access to that. Now, we can say, okay, so you have the road, it could be coral road with uh, water and power, but then we say, well, you don't have a sewer, but then with the size of those properties, right, it's about a thousand square meter. It's 929 square meter per lot. So the 929 square meters per lot, you can build a dwelling with a septic and leaching field configuration. So, so that would resolve that. Now, uh, I know that uh, the way that we're developing the north is very different from the way we develop the south. And because the north, as we all know, contains the aquifer. So, so the uh, track 319, there's uh, 211 lots of track 319, if you look at the you know, map for that particular property. So, uh, uh, the reason why I'm saying that is possible because, you know, I, I started residing in uh, Umang Road, which is part of this track 319, in 1958. Now, this particular area that I was living in under the land use program or the arendu program after we lost all our properties with the federal government, only had a dirt road. And my mother is a uh, patera or she's a Navy midwife. And we situated in Umang because our property was again uh, condemned that was situated next to in on the bay in Agat. So, that's the second property that we had condemned. So uh, my father just decided that we'll just get the arendu program under the land use permit. And we started in 1958. Now consider 58 to now, that's about maybe 60 some years. Uh, but now if you visit Umang, we can say that track 319 kind of, uh, we situated in about maybe 12 members of the uh, land trust. No people, some of them are veterans, and we finally got the approval from some of the lending institutions for the veterans to get a long term lease, a long term mortgage for a land trust property. So, back to the 20 lots located in the Pagotchel site. So, Pagotchel is connected to Umang, and in between there is 211 lots, and you have two creeks that are in between those lots. So, the question again, is it feasible? My personal opinion, yes. Uh, can we use uh, DPW uh, resources? Yes. Can we use GPA and water resources? Yes. Do we have the willpower to do it? Yes. So uh, that is uh, my perspective on that one. Uh, if uh, I'm not sure if you have any other questions to... Well. So has this uh, been um, on the agenda to be vetted by the commission or how, what, what, what happens with ideas like that? 
Did you talk to the staff? Are they going to look at it? Do you have a cost estimate for whatever they say is needed? Yeah, or, uh, or who will take the lead on that? Are yeah, you? I uh, presented that during the, uh, my first meeting. There was uh, about maybe March, April, May. Mm -hmm. So uh, what I understood when working with the agencies is that uh, for us to get DPW, to coordinate with the uh, land management, to uh, re-spot the property for the rights of way. So before we get the machines in, we have to get the uh, land management to mark the rights of way. Because if you look at the mapping, uh, that property was done back in the 80s, 70s, 80s, and 90s. Now it's the year 2000. So. Uh, the coordination between Chamorro Land Trust, Land Management, DPW, One Waterworks, GPA. Uh, in my opinion, it's, uh, this is a simple project, right? But to tap in and integrate the four or five agencies, th that we have to uh, coordinate. And I did bring it up to our group and it's being assessed at the moment, so. All right, I know that the, the trust and the commission is also, has, you know, we've inquired in previous hearings, what is your priority, which lots, which ones are you going to be able to distribute in leases, and how do we make maximum use of those lots, right, uh, by bringing in sewer so we can issue more. And we were tracking, um, some that had infrastructure nearby that was tracked 2022. 20, this is in the north. 10, well, 10090 1 1, 10090 1 R2, those are in Dedido. And um, I would like to ask the timeline for all these projects, but um, let's see if we have time on that. Let, uh, I'm going to keep going, but yeah, have you been? Seeing progress on those, Mr. Herrera, in your meetings and in your, with your work on the commission, do you, are you optimistic that these are going to be, comp that we are going to be able to complete work on these? Yes, relative to the north properties, the 10122, uh, our director here is very much in tune with that uh, project. So uh, there's up, uh, updated you know, progress on the north. As we all know, the uh, properties in those tracks, 101, 22, are basically less than a uh, thousand square meter. So that means that because it's on top of the aquifer, of course, the uh, Land Trust Commission have already worked with some of the agencies that has that on the uh, master plan for uh, in uh, stalling the sewer in those areas. Uh, that's for the north. Okay. Now, track 319 was... Uh, I know, I get it. Right, right. Yeah. Slightly different because they are subdivided under the 929 square meter lots, which if you don't have a sewer line, you can still have the septic leaching. Yes. So, so that doesn't stop us from developing track 319. Okay, good. Or there's also a bill pending, I think, to uh, allow different types of uh, septic tank or septic type of disposal so that it's going we're hoping that would help the situation as well all right um, we had again talked to CLTC we had an oversight hearing in June 2021 regarding uh, one of the topics was 20 leases it was committing and a list of applicants that were on the list to be reviewed for those leases, including new eligibility requirements according to the settlement agreement. And do you believe that the trust is progressing fast enough on these items? Or do you think there's any impediments or roadblocks that, that are, are slowing down the progress, I guess, in getting the leases out and reviewing the applicants? I see positive uh, improvement in the land trust administration group. Uh, I understand there, were, there was only like about maybe six uh, agents. Uh, one passed away, unfortunately, uh, 
a month ago or a couple of months ago, but then our, our director here would mention, would can at, affirm that the, they have been interviewing additional uh, land agents to augment the existing uh, uh, manpower. So the question is, it moving forward progressively? I am. Um, I can affirm that yes, uh, the trust agents are working in coordination with the uh, Ancestral Lands Commission to follow the uh, new settlement agreement uh, requirements. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, by, by statute, the revenue generated from commercial leases is supposed to support CLTC operations or infrastructure that it needs. And I know that you, Mr. Herrera, have done work, um, research, your own research, like you said, and, and made your own proposals as to what things look to you like they can be implemented. You've researched some of these commercial leases and brought to uh, t attention of the commission some of the problematic ones, I think. And I want to commend you for that. Uh, one of those that I'm tracking is this. Um, so the CLTC has generated in the past revenues from royalties. They call it royalties, which is a cut from the sale of mineral extractions on CLTC property. I think you've done some research on this, uh, uh, in particular at the Guam Raceway Park, uh, including research on the, the volume of extractions that's taking place there, mineral extractions, the rights of way for a heavy equipment crossing through CLTC property to Smith Bridge, which is an adjacent property, and some active subleases on the property. Uh, and this is um, of concern because the lease actually expired May 31, 2018. And I know this because there was a law that we addressed in here to authorize the Chamorro Land Trust to release that property, right? either to the raceway, first give them first dibs, or to anyone else who was interested. But I don't think that a new lease has been entered into. And I guess I wanted to ask you, it was like at your urging, I believe that the, there was a site visit to the Guam Raceway. Do you, do you have any um, findings on that? Or, or can you just tell us how, how you believe that lease is being managed? Okay, initially when we, uh uh, on my first confirmation, uh, if you may recall, we had a, a short video that was uh, doing an aerial assessment on that property. Anyway, uh, long story short, when I got on board, we did a site inspection and then we presented it to, the, uh, to our administrative director about the situation of the uh, Smith Bridge crossing over Chamorro Land Trust property and also some of the uh, questionable uh, excavation that was done on that 250-acre lot. So what our administrative director did is that uh, she uh, proceeded and uh, gave a, uh, a cease and desist order to both uh, Smith Bridge and the uh, operators of the uh, raceway park. So that's being assessed uh, from the last time that we had that cease and desist order. And there's, we still have more research to kind of confirm, especially the excavation. Uh, th there was a lot of question on the volume and uh, the amount of a transaction that was supposed to take place. So uh, what we did is that I requested the administration to, uh, for us to do a site visit and I, we did do a site visit. We took a lot of uh, still photos and I also took a aerial uh, photo with the drone to kind of measure the amount of ex excavation that was done uh, on that property. So uh, I provided that you know, drone video and the PowerPoint from uh, I think March or April. So that's, the, that's on that part with the one raceway part. Do you, or I mean, we did receive that, thank you. And if, do you have any objection if we look at that right now? 
Oh, no objection. If uh, we, we may please look at that. Our director's familiar with that also. Okay, so if I could ask the audio to cue that. This is, uh, it's short, it's, it looks like it's uh, one is one minute, 54 seconds. The other one's about two minutes, 50 seconds, Senator. All right, please play that. You, were, you took these pictures and videos? Right, that's a okay. drone, that's about uh, 300 feet. If you look at the truck moving on the uh, right side of the screen, that's, that's the shortcut that's leading up to uh, Smith Bridge. So that uh, uh, road goes through Chamorro Land Trust lots. And that's the uh, Smith Bridge quarry that you see there. If you see the uh, uh, Euclid truck, that's coming from the uh, raceway park. Now, uh, there, see, now we're looking at the east side of the property. That's the sunrise, sunrise side. There's the trail right on the center that crosses over Chamorro Land Trust. And you see the coral that's been sliced right where you see the green. That's the boundary of the 250 acres uh, from the Raceway Park. Now that's the Raceway Park right there. Uh, keep your eye on a pipe to the left, which identifies the original elevation of the property. You see that like a double S mark? That's uh, Chalanguaca and Chalambinado. That's uh, on the top left is the quarry. And there's a pipe right there on your right side, right on that corner where there's a property. So that's the original height. That's about maybe 80 feet up. So I used the drone to measure the height from the top all the way down to you see, you see where the red uh, dirt is. And then right on the center of the screen, you see uh, you see the truck there where I situated right there's the black. That's those pebbles that you see is the bo uh, boundary between the land trust and a private landowner on the left. But uh, uh, taken into consideration, that's about 80 feet high at one time based on the topography that we took. So there I'm landing the drone now from 300 feet coming down to where the uh, ex excavation. Uh, uh, I know that the uh, you know, land management and land trust are in coordination. We're trying to you know, get the engineering assessment on exactly how much. Uh, that's still the uh, raceway park. That's looking at the east of the property. And you see a truck passing by, the Euclid truck. I'm not sure if you'll show. If you look at the background, uh, then there should be a truck passing by there, if I'm not mistaken. Right there. That's a Euclid truck. So A what truck? Euclid means it's a, a, a larger dump truck okay. that maybe carries about 60 to 100 cubic yards of material. The regular dump truck carries only about 15 cubic yards. So those are for mining trucks. And Please proceed. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so that's the area, and we have a PowerPoint, so, but that would support the PowerPoint. It's the property adjacent, you said uh, part of that is private yeah, yeah. property. Yes, is part of the, that uh, quarry yeah. there okay, hold, private property? Yes, you see the center uh, wood there with the flags? Look up to the pipe. So to the right is the land trust, to the left is a private. On top of that is a private property on the top okay. portion. So... Uh, uh, on the PowerPoint slide, that would you Okay, the PowerPoint, please. Uh, uh, yeah. So, so you see the, uh, you can see how much material has been excavated. So, uh, th now this contract was done, uh, you know, two administrations ago. So, okay, we can go to the next slide. Now you can hold there. You see where the arrow's at? That black arrow? Yes. Now that's the borderline between the. Uh, 250 acres uh, raceway going into the other land trust property. Now that artery there is the one that we saw from the aerial. Now this is uh, YouTube or no, not YouTube, I think it was uh, another site from land management. That's an aerial view, but what we saw earlier was the actual property today or this just several months ago. How much more is being done in that property? Uh, that's why I'm requesting my 
humble request for the uh, legislature to give me some more time to work with our director there to find uh, an amicable solution with this situation that we're finding. So, any questions? You see the letter A, B, and C? I can't read it. Okay, anyway, there are two circles. There's yes. a circle on I the see left. see the ABC. Right, so that's the border between the uh, uh, raceway park. And then B would be heading up to the uh, Smith Bridge Quarry. So if you remember the drone shot where you saw that big truck or the Euclid that's heading that way up to the backside of the uh, quarry of Smith Bridge. And where is that on the map? Uh, on the map. Uh, I mean, on this photo. Is that C? Oh, what? yes, correct, correct. Okay. Yeah, yes. Beyond C. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, and those uh, lots on the top left, where you see those uh, partials, maybe one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, that's Salan Guaca and Salan Binodu. Those are private properties. So. Okay. Those are Smith Bridge equipment on the private property. Where you see on the left is Joey and on the right is Pierce. Uh, we were trying to get an actual land assessment by using a GPS just to kind of do a position uh, location of exactly where we're at. Now, now, keep in mind, right, that this contract was you know, done in uh, the year 2001, 2, 3. Uh, so, the, many years have, have passed, and if you see the amount of excavation done, this is not the only quarry here, there's another quarry on the east side of this property. And uh, this is really concerning to me, uh, you know, because it's for the benefit of our constituents. That, that's my point. This is not about me, or, but it's about... Uh, applying what is fair with the uh, business community and as well as the Chamorro Land Trust constituents. Okay, we can go to the next slide. On the left, you see the Guam International Raceway Park. So there's, during that uh, site inspection, we saw two or three or four uh, companies that were operating. There we, you know, we were trying to figure out, you know, uh, what was their uh, occupancy permit there, which I don't have an answer for that at this moment. We can go to the next slide, please. Uh, you can tell on the left side, that's the property that borders between the private and the land trust. Uh, on the right side, you see the CLTC pipe. That's the pipe that you saw on top of that quarry. So we went there because that's the corner of the land trust property. So we went there to mark it just so that when I deploy the drone, I have a reference point. So you and I and the public can see what is happening there at actual time. And we can go to the next slide. That's the entrance of the, uh, the left is the entrance of the uh, raceway park. That's on the uh, west side next to that route, back road to Anderson, I think it's Route 15. And then on the right side is the uh, pipe. And then if you look at on the foreground, you see the coral, white coral. So that's the amount of uh, coral that's been excavated there. And if you uh, keep your focus right on the left foreground, that's the drag strip. You, if you've been to the raceway park, mm -hmm. the drag strip is on up about maybe 80 feet high. And on the left and right of the drag strip, the middle green color shows you where the strip is at. And the left side and the right side, which is the left is the east side of the property of the drag strip. The right side is the west side, which is close to the road. And where the pipe is at is on the north. So they excavated that amount of uh, uh, minerals from that side. Okay, we can go to the next. Okay, and then, oh, you can see on the background, on the left is where the drag strip is at, to the right is the private property. Okay, next slide. That's the entrance of the uh, raceway park, and those are the 
businesses that are operating there at the time when we did a site visit. I think there's two or three of them. So and go to the next site. Uh, those are the operation that's there. The ATV viewpoint and uh, ECO, I'm pretty sure that's eco hiking or something of that nature. So, And it's called the Guam Adventurers. Okay, and next slide, I think. So there's, that's just that on that one uh, business operation. Those photos and video are from April 2022? Uh, yes, and, uh, um, Madam Chair. Uh, if I recall correctly, uh, the, le the lease expired in 2018. It had authorized the removal of minerals and that I remember at the time uh, we waited a while for there to be an accounting of how much minerals had actually been extracted and that I think they had to enter into a settlement with the Tomorrowland Trust to, to kind of um, account for all of that at that time. That's at the time the, wow. the lease had expired or right around then because it came to the legislature uh, under another bill to propose another, uh, another lease. And that bill passed, but in that bill, it was very specific that mineral extraction was prohibited unless specifically approved by the legislature going forward, right? And it's specifically because they wanted to look at the terms of any further mineral extraction. Um, and because of the accounting issues in the past, right? So we wanted to make a very clear way of how we were going to be able to assess and calculate and, and get value for the Chamor Land Trust if that was going to be allowed. Um, so it is concerning to me that uh, it's your understanding from your site visit that mineral extraction is occurring on the Chamor Land Trust property not just on the Smithbridge property and the adjacent landowner's property, but also on the, the land trust property? Uh, correct, yeah. If, uh, okay, if that's look, what you're showing in the uh, video. Yeah, I mean, okay. the, the pictures kind of lie to us. And uh, no. Okay. I, again, and, and the other thing on that, right, uh, Madam Chair, is that there's backfilling being done by other companies that come and dump their construction material. And, and that's another concern, is that you excavate a top-grade material and convert the top-grade mineral to cash, and then you dump back uh, old construction material. Now, uh, economic logic would tell you, right, that, uh, uh, that, that, that the trust is not getting its fair share of uh, transaction in the uh, negotiation or if there's a negotiation. All right. Well, thank you. Um, thank you again for bringing this to the attention of the board. And if I could, with the director, since you're here, if you have any comments on this, is this being treated with uh, urgency? You, you, is your cease and desist order still valid? That's correct. Um, we have not changed um, anything since that the cease and desist was issued. Um, we haven't uh, deposited any funds because we're just not sure that that it that what they're transmitting is the correct amount, right? Uh, from what was extracted, um, we did receive a topo, I believe, in the summer, maybe in June, which is with our survey division. So um, we are trying to determine um, what was extracted from. I believe it was. The last commission that was there, uh, Chairwoman Pika Fehrin, and some action was taken. So we're just trying to verify that information. Okay, so when was your deceased or cease and desist order? Before you came on. Right. Yeah. Earlier this year. Okay, so 2022. And, but at that point or up till now, you are receiving. Um, payments that you think uh, represent also uh, royalties for mineral extraction. So 
It was prior. It was prior to the cease and desist. Prior yeah. to the cease the, and the desist checks that we order. received. Yes. Um, so we haven't received checks recently. Okay. But the checks were still trickling in after that cease and desist. But after 2018, because you weren't there before 2018, right? Correct. I wasn't so there. So it's fair to say that after 2018, after the lease had expired and the new law had been put in place, that the mineral extraction continued. That's what it looks like. And, and we did the cease and desist. Um, we are not uh, receiving any, well, they haven't given us any checks uh, okay. after, yeah. It's been a while. But the commission is addressing this? I mean, looking into it? Yeah, and with the help of Commissioner Herrera, we were making strides. Okay, I hope it's treated with urgency. This looks urgent to me. Um, all right, so, you know, um, coming up in the ne next session, we're gonna have a hearing on the bill uh, 277, which is the Guam Undersea Access for Homes Act, or GUAHA. We're gonna address it in our session. We've already had a public hearing on it. Chim that Chamorro Land Trust did come and testify. Thank you for that. And in support of this, and, and the biggest part of this bill, you know, it, it establishes rates for these undersea cables. But the biggest part for me was learning, you know, over the years that like the prior rates were like $5,000 a year, or I think the higher one was $10,000 a year. Still very undervalued if you look around, you know, the globe as to what they are doing. This one, we, we put a value on at $100,000 a year. We put landing fees at $100,000. And, um, you know, we're still hoping to, to uh, you know, that a government as a whole, we're going to be able to develop this more. But for now, we wanted the Chamar Lantras to be able to, act, you know, utilize this income. We want the cables to connect us, so we, we, you know, we want this to be a win-win situation. We want to be able to utilize those funds, most especially for the infrastructure, especially sewer, so that we can divide the lots up smaller and, and get, issue more of them, and that we can do this sooner rather than later, and that we can have enough for surveys and power and water infrastructure to go into these lots. And uh, so that we do not have the Chamorro Land Trust of the past where we have, um, you know, really substandard conditions. We've got to end the substandard conditions. So I really uh, appreciate your help on this and, and all your work together. And Mr. Herrera, I want to commend you for continuing to look at these commercial leases and what the value is, right? Um, so, for example, we've got other leases coming up for antenna sites, right? Commercial antenna sites. And they're different than, you know, regular, let's put this out for bid. How much do you want to bid? Because in some of these cases, we've got infrastructure very specific to one company or one industry already on the properties, right? So it's kind of a different um, thing. And uh, I think our regular commercial rules are, are not equipped to get a full value at this point. And so I am looking to you to find ways to get full value. And I'm very willing to help, such as what we did in this submerged cables. All right. And um, the other uh, issues in general, yeah, well, I, I bring this to every um, nominee. Is So our office continues to get, I would say, our number one calls in our office. If it's not a public health issue, it's a Chamorro Land Trust issue. And a lot of these are still, um, these people are either lessees or potential lessees or names on the list or something, and they're just not getting answers from the, the trust. And I understand there's very few employees at our, at our land trust, unfortunately. Oh, they're very hard at work, but these constituents, and we have a lot of people on the waiting list, on the actual list, on, on they have properties that are not, they're not able to use lists, that's those kinds of things. So there's a lot of people we have to answer to, and um, I'm just going to put that on your radar that we are still getting calls, that they, we are not responding fast enough. So please, yeah, if you can come up with some procedures that you catch all the calls so that they don't have to, 
you know, I'm, otherwise they call my office and I have to get to you. I have to ask you again for the information, right? Give me an update until I can get an update to them. Whereas I think it's much more efficient if you just get them the information they need as fast as possible. Some of them are just waiting for, for um, utility, you know, signing off on them. And there are some prob prob problems that I, when that we discover, right, that are not easily solved, not easily answered. Some of this are the survey maps, right? So we've got a whole gamut of survey issues. People who had their property surveyed at the direction of the land trust said, you go and survey it yourself. They did that, they paid for it. Those surveys did not get recorded. They're, they are stuck. They're completely stuck. Land management, it doesn't seem to be budging on that. So they need to get a new survey or they've been told they need to go get another survey. Their cost, those are, I know, not, not issues that you made an error, but we are, we did direct them to go pay for it themselves. Some of these we're hoping, you know, to find a fair way to pay for some, some of these with the income that we can receive. Hopefully from the submerged cables, pay for the survey, survey out all the property. For example, survey the road that you're proposing for agate, that agate lot. Put in that infrastructure that will bring us, you know, bring the water and power closer in those lots up in Dedido as fast as possible. Um, and then the other issues that they bring to my office's attention are, and I, I, I know it's difficult, but I really do expect the Chamorro Land Trust Commission to come up with solutions on this. This is uh, dumping, right? Illegal dumping. Sometimes the dumping is done by lessees that, or you know, the hoarding or collection of cars, old cars, things like this. Uh, that one, is your control, and I expect the Chamorro Land Trust to resolve those. There's others that where the dumping is occurring, non-lessees are dumping on property. Property that's not either not been licensed or not, you know, somebody has a lease on it, but they're not in there because of, you know, the utilities or the roads or other problems, but the dumping is getting in there somehow. And so because we know this problem and because it's so big, and because we receive so many complaints, and it really is, it's a health issue for the island. You saw this when they had dengue, and they had to go in there. That was the road we had to go clear, is all Chamorro Land Trust properties. So I would like to come up with some preventative solutions, right, where, where there is not a lessee on, our, on those properties who, who can be responsible for that property, and who, you know, if the dumping's occurring, then we can, you know, cite them, but it's these ones that are not occupied and how can we better protect them? And uh, I know EPA told us in past hearings that they had put cameras up in some of their sites, but the cameras get stolen. So I'm looking for, that's the last I heard and I, I'd like to hear some more creative solutions. I know we've got drone capabilities now and other capabilities and fencing was proposed at one point, you know, and so maybe an, an analysis of whether it's uh, cost beneficial to put that fencing up, whether we can get a grant to prevent the dumping somehow, right? But if, if we could get some eyes on that, I would appreciate that as well. All right, Sen Senator Taitakui, do you have any questions or comments for the panel? Today, I, for me, I, I've scored because I was able to learn more about the Chamorro Land Trust today and what's been going on. So um, I usually come to these public hearings when it comes to the appointment of an individual wanting to serve uh, the community. I think it's important to be here to say thank you so much for stepping up to the plate to do this. And uh, sure enough, just watching the, you work the drone was was really impressive that you go beyond sitting in a room every month with a group of people looking at documents and paperwork, but seeing a member of the board to go out there literally out in the jungle or in these areas that are, are maybe harmed, you know, by other people or 
those who are committing crimes are illegally being in an area they're not supposed to conduct business, like you said earlier, that's concerning. Um, I'm just in awe of you. Thank you, Mr. Herrera, for doing that. Is that drone belong to the Chamor Land Trust or is that your personal drone? It's a personal drone and... See, we scored. Chamor oh. Land Trust just scored having you on board. <laughs> having that drone with you is just uh, beyond, you know, what we're asking you to do in sitting on this board to look at any indiscretions or to look at a, a ways or solutions to address some of the issues that Chamor Land Trust has. I mean, going beyond and using your, your own personal property to, to help this agency says a lot about an individual and mm. their determination to make this um, agency thrive and, and do well. Um, already our, our chairman of land is just, she does an amazing job. The speaker has such a passion for more land trust, ancestral lands, anything that has to deal with lands, because that, that's the heart of our, our, our culture and who we are. We are identified by our land, and by protecting it, it's so important. And I could see in your heart that uh, this is very meaningful for you, mm -hmm. and um, I want to thank you so much. And, and I appreciate, too, the, the work you're doing on, especially bringing up the fact there are people that are in the areas that are conducting business that should not be there. Mm -hmm. um, I've heard of some individuals using their, um, well, the one that you brought up earlier, I believe it was uh, Guam Adventures, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. I've heard some issues that uh, they shouldn't be in certain areas, that they're not allowed to be uh, taking hikes in certain parts parts of the island that are owned by Chamorro Land Trust or they need the, um, what is it, uh, permission to do so. And like you said in your testimony earlier, you, you don't even know if, they ha if they're licensed or not. So I appreciate, you know, if you can look into that as well. And because there's a liability issue here too as well. Right. If, you, if yeah. you're knowingly that, the commission knowingly, there is a company utilizing their property for any kind of adventure or hiking or anything. If anything should happen to somebody, there, there's a liability to it, to the Chamor Land Trust. So um, please look into that. And uh, Mr. Herrera, again, thank you for your love for this island and wanting to serve our community, especially in this area, Chamor Land Trust. So many people rely on you. And thank you again. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Senator. Thank you very much. Senator Taitsugui, and thank you for being here for this hearing. I agree, it is important that we keep abreast of what's happening, and during these appointment hearings, we can use this opportunity. And um, to the acting director, Jesus Masi, for being here and for your work. And, um, you know, Mr. Herrera, so one of the other issues that the commission has to deal with is the director is an acting capacity. Mm. And uh, I know she's sharing her duties with uh, her, her classified job, unclassified uh, other job yeah I mean in, you know within the government but uh, yes so and I know that the staff is challenged there and that's why you've done a lot of this work yourself but I want to commend you for it thank you for it and thank you for keeping us informed and I hope that that we can resolve some of these issues with your help on the commission and with the rest of the commissioners going forward um, thank you again for accepting this appointment and the sacrifice that you make to serve on this board this commission, the, the work, the reading, the researching, the political challenges, I'm sure, and, um, and for going above and beyond uh, and to really investigating for yourself and seeing for yourself some of these issues and, and bringing them to the attention of the commission who I'm hoping will take these as urgent matters in need of resolution. All right, well, there being no additional individuals to present for the testimony, this committee will consider uh, the appointment of Mr. Herrera duly heard. The public hearing is now adjourned and the time is 3.10 p.m. Sidious Masi.